Today on the passage for just a moment, I want to talk to you about how deep, how rich, how wonderful God's Word is, and how even as Bible students, you and I can never exhaust the Word of God. There is always more to this book. Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome back to the passage again today. My name is Jim Merle, and as that statement was a moment ago, that quote that I quote myself in, there is more to the book. That comes out of something I did a number of years ago. I used to preach a lot of gospel meetings. It wasn't uncommon for me to do eight, ten meetings or so a year and typically speaking, when I would go and do those meetings, it was the standard that an eldership, a preacher, whoever had invited me to do the meeting would say, Jim, can you give us a theme? Can you give us a subject? Can you give us a series of titles that you're going to preach on when you get here to the meeting? And that meeting might be scheduled two, three years in advance or at least some period of time. And I was always a bit uncomfortable about doing that. I like to preach more off the cuff and to preach uh, kind of in the moment that I stand up in so I can be excited about what I'm preaching. Maybe it's something, and typically is, some things that I've already been studying in my personal studies over the course of time. And if I stand up and preach from that perspective, I can definitely be more knowledgeable about the subjects at hand, but I can also probably come across in a better way uh, by doing it that way. So I did not like, I often hesitated many years at least, and giving them any type of theme for that. But I finally came to the conclusion one year, and I tried this, and it worked well. I told uh, the first eldership that called, I said, look, uh, they asked for the theme, and I said, look, I'll tell you what the theme is. The theme is there is more to the book. And I remember their response to me. It was like, wow, that's, that's good. Uh, I look forward to that. That's interesting. You know, I look forward to that. We'll get that on the advertisement or whatever. And I ended up that entire year Everybody called or everybody that I touched base with to get those meetings locked in, I would tell them the same thing. Now, I didn't preach the same meeting every time. I generally preached kind of what I uh, felt as if they needed. I would listen closely once I got into town, and I generally would only kind of schedule, in my mind at least, the first two sessions, maybe Bible class and the Sunday morning sermon. Then after that, I would wing it and play it by ear to the things that I felt that they needed. I would listen to the elderships and the preacher, and they would tell me things inadvertently, wouldn't ask, but I could kind of sense areas where we might touch and, and improve and build upon uh, what they were already uh, doing as Bible students, as a congregation. So that's the way I often function. But back to the idea, I would tell them there's more to the book because the truth is that unloosed me from being bound to any subject once I got there. I would preach whatever, and I was confident, I always knew that if it came off these pages right here, no matter the subject, no matter the text or context, there was always more there because as a Bible student, I had experienced that. But you know, that's also a biblical principle, and it's what we're going to notice today for just a moment out of two verses found from Romans chapter 11. So if you have your Bible, I've got my printed copy in hand today. I'll be reading from the New King James Translation, by the way, today. But um, Romans chapter 11, beginning in verse 33, here's what the Scripture says. Oh, the depth and the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. And then the next verse, 34, is actually a quotation from Job 36 and 22. But it says this, For who has known the mind of the Lord? or who has become his counselor. Now, in context, you have to understand, especially in the context of Job, God is reminding Job that, look, I know more than you do, okay? No matter the wisdom Job or any other human has acquired in life, no matter what they have achieved, God always knows best is kind of the idea. You remember the old, old-time TV show, Father Knows Best. Well, God the Father certainly knows best, and His ways are above our ways, other scriptures tell us. And so we have to kind of accept the fact that God has uh, the ability to know what's right for us even when we don't necessarily see it in the same manner. But the application that comes out here as well for me, tying 32 and 34, or 33 and 34 together, I should say, is the fact that there is a richness, there is a depth when it comes to the wisdom and knowledge of God. And that, and out of that, that his ways and his wisdom is, to us at least, unsearchable. His judgments are past finding out. And that's really something that encourages me. Every time I sit down to study God's word, to read it, 
uh, to examine it, whatever, whether I'm kind of taking that casual glance, maybe like in a daily Bible reading situation or that careful gaze where I'm really studying, trying to get out all the nuggets that something has within it. I found through the years in applying this verse that there's always more to that book. No matter how contrite those things are, no matter how familiar you are with a certain uh, chapter or text or something like that, there's always more from that. You know, even something as simple as John 3, 16, if you really dig into that verse, even if you pulled it and just dug just in 3, 16, there's so much more there about the love of God and what he's willing to do because of his love. And on and on you could go. Any passage you could apply the same. So I just want to remind you today, as I remind myself, each time I reach for God's word to study it, to read it, what have you, just always tell myself up front before I even before I even open the cover to look inside, just look at look at this book and reflect on it and say, there, there's more to this book right here. There's always more. Don't ever get to a place as a Bible student where you say, well, I'm going to read chapter what today, but I've read that a million times and you know, I already know what it means. No, you don't always know all that it means. You may not even know anything that it means at some points in your life. There's always more to the book. So I hope that encourages you to be an even deeper and a better Bible student to examine God's Word more carefully and cautiously as you go and be sure that you're learning all the truths that God has in store for you today. There's more to the book, folks. Grab your Bibles, and until I see you again, stay faithful, my friend.